Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. She's a Palestinian American. There has been a Palestinian flag on display outside her Capitol Hill office. Is it still there? Sure is. Do you expect her to take it down? No. No. Did you see her statement after the attacks over the weekend? She did not condemn Hamas's attack. AOC did. Bernie Sanders did. Rashida Tlaib did not. Here's Congressman Max Miller's take, quote, the halls of Congress belong to America. They should be reserved for flags that embody our great nation. The Palestinian flag should not have a place here. That's why I'm sponsoring an appropriations amendment to end this silliness. So he did introduce an amendment that would bar non-U.S. flags mm. um, in Congress. Personally? Yeah. Let her keep the flag. I don't want to see that. Keep it. Uh, full publicity. I mean, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Let people know exactly what's going on here. Where she Bond. stands, you mean? Yeah, and, and yeah. You're okay with that? But take her off all the committees. Uh, take her off. Don't the, let fine. her have okay. any say other than that she gets to vote as an elected member of Congress. But I don't disagree. Do you want to have the flag? Let everyone know about it. She's a vicious anti-Semite. She is an anti-Semite. Case closed. And I think the anti-Semites are coming out of the woodwork in yeah. America today. And that's a very bad thing. The, the aforementioned, the four introduced David Barnes is here. Okay, day four of the war, yeah. Treasury yields down, stocks seem to be a bit more stable. We carry on like this? Well, you got to remember that stocks are up 750 points since Friday morning. So this is a very weird thing about Columbus Day, where the stock market was open and the bond market was not. So we didn't get a chance to see this interaction yesterday. Normally, you have a war breakout. You expect yields to drop, yes. bonds rally, but stocks sell off. Stocks and bonds are normally reverse correlated. Right now, they're totally correlated together because of the Fed. So stocks are going up despite war because yields are dropping. That's not normal. It's a byproduct of the weird combination of Fed policy, this awkward Columbus Day holiday, and then the war situation. So where are we going? Well, I think it's going to be a very mixed bag. I think that you, you the 11 basis points is a good drop in the 10-year, but 4.7 is still a high 10-year. And so if you're going to see downward pressure on yields as this continues, that will probably stabilize a lot of the stocks that have been most volatile. The problem is still big tech was where the market was dependent. And I don't see big tech getting a rally here. Not much of a, a response to the war. In day four, I mean, war on several fronts here, a war in Ukraine. That you would expect yields to be dropping more. Uh, I would expect the stock market to be dropping more. Well, it's not just not much of a response. The stock market's up significantly. It's right. up 200 points yesterday. It looks like it's an up, up uh, what is that, 70 points this morning. Um, but I think it's a byproduct of the market responding to yields. They don't think the war will go on forever. But if you do get downward pressure yields, it boosts some of these risk assets. But it's not normal. You're right. You're here in New York. I take it you've seen the demonstrations, pro-Hamas demonstrations here. I have, and I've seen news coverage of other things going on. I saw the uh, release that the Harvard students put out yep. yesterday. Yep. That probably got me the most. I actually think it's a very ironic thing right now in our country that the two people that President Biden has to worry about most to his left are the squad and Harvard students. And it's a really sad day. You're right there, David. Thanks for being on the program today. David is still with me. David Barnes is sitting next to me. What do you think? NVIDIA. Uh, he said it. It is 110 times earnings. So I don't understand how you could say the market's not appreciating where it may go. Maybe it performs. Maybe it executes. But I think that's what the 110 times multiple's for. That should come down to 40 times. Is 40 times a cheap multiple? So they have to triple business to get to a 40 times multiple. He it's thinks expensive. they can. Well, they, and they very well could, but it is a really risky play. That's all I'm saying. Okay, fair enough. Pepsi reported this morning the stock is up 1.5%. I, I guess price hikes are not keeping consumers away, right? Or are they? Pepsi, no, PepsiCo has this... In the leverage is insane. Demand for snacks, demand for drinks is resilient, even though prices in the past quarter went up on average 11 percent. But they've got pricing power. power. Yeah. Well, not with me. My kid, the big bag of Cool Ranch Doritos, six ninety nine. I said, put it back. Six ninety nine for a bag of Doritos. You feed, feed your children Doritos? Uh, yes, I do. OK, good for you. David, uh, you were on the call, I believe. I was. As a longtime Pepsi shareholder, I'm thankful to Lauren for serving her kids Doritos. <laughs> um, they have pricing power, and they're the textbook company of pricing power. Organic revenue growth was up 8.8%, more than expected. Earnings higher, revenues higher, and they forward-guided higher. And it's not just margins that are increasing, but also volumes. So it isn't merely that they're making more money because they're raising prices. They're selling more units of goods. This is a phenomenal company. It's grown their dividend for 
decades. Any comments perhaps about smaller packaging sizes now that many Americans are on Ozempic and Wegovy and the weight loss drugs? But it was expected. People have been thinking people have been thinking that that was weighing down on some of it and their results would seem to indicate. No, it's not. Okay. Thank you, David, for the voice of was the regional it Ozempic. It's just it's just common sense. Ozempic. The idea that people are going to stop consuming these things is just a it's nonsense. Totally different view of human nature. Thank than you I very have. much indeed. You're David. welcome. You're totally right on this, Mal. I may move on. Mm. Uh, Palantir up just a fraction. Nine cents. Whoop de doo. But they got an army contract yeah. about a Correct. That should have worked the trick. To test and scale artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities. This is worth up to a quarter billion dollars through 2026. Any comment? Just want to be clear, $250 million contract. The company's trading at a $29.5 billion market cap. So $250 million of revenue in a long-term contract for a $30 billion company, it isn't that big. What does that say about AI? What, what's it say about market froth? That would be my concern. You know what I mean? Mm. That, that people are just reacting okay. a bit too uh, uh, euphorically on some of this stuff. Elsewhere, Amazon is now in, I think, is, is it the second prime day of the, uh, of the year. Of the year that, yeah. And it's underway. Are you impressed with, I know you shop on Amazon. Are you impressed <laughs> with anything? I have to say, and I feel bad, but the deals are a snore. Okay. Yeah. I think we got all of that, just about. Why and I you, see David's on the site. You I just, I see sta- they have Stacey Abrams' book for 48% off on the homepage, and I think <laughs> if they can get that a little bit bigger, maybe they can. You are cruel, man. You are absolutely <laughs> cruel. Uh, let me show me Hyatt Hotels, please, because I think well, earlier they were straight up, and they're still at 96%. Wow. What's the story? They're set to join the S&P Midcap 400 Index this oh, Thursday. Help. They'll replace National Instruments, which is being bought by Emerson Electric. So they'll be in the Midcap 400. Well, do you have any reaction to Hyatt Hotel? You don't go up because you get added to an index. You, maybe you do for five seconds, but this is more fundamental than that. It's a very good time to be in the hotel business. Revenue rates are the highest they've ever been. People are spending more at hotels than ever. But when you get added to an index, it just simply means that you're now part of a basket. It doesn't actually increase earnings. Those are technical things that traders like that have nothing to do with real value. But the fundamentals point up. The, the fundamentals stock. are very good in the hotel space. All right. Uh, you have some um, dividend stocks, don't you? And you're going to start with Lockheed Martin. I do. And one of the reasons Lockheed Martin was up $30 yesterday, but it had been down over $60 a share in the month or month and a half before because people were worried about the Ukraine funding getting cut. And they make a lot of the missiles that are being sold to uh, to Ukraine. I think that Lockheed is the best defense company to own if you believe that there's problems in China, Taiwan, if you believe there's problems in Israel, Gaza, and if you believe in the Ukraine-Russia deal. Now, we don't sell, Lockheed doesn't sell our missiles to Israel. They don't really need to. But it's more a general feel that there is instability in the world. And Lockheed is a great dividend grower that also, I think, has the story necessary in these geopolitics. What does it pay, dividend yield? Uh, it's about 3% growing at 10% a year. All right. Now, you grouped together three stocks, yeah. Chevron, Exxon, Midstream Energy, the UMI. Yes. Why do you group them together? Because, again, I think that you need the best quality names. They're only trading at about 10 times earnings. They were up big yesterday. But you, the, this is the thing. People have to own something that's going to make money if oil goes above $100, because a lot of other things in your portfolio are going to go down. And in the meantime, I don't want to say, let's join this trade because of the Israel-Hamas issue. We've owned these names forever. But you said you want capital gains. Hmm. Okay, Exxon was at $30 during COVID. Is 400% a good capital gain? Because that's what it's made since the bottom. And it's trading at 10 times earnings. It isn't like it had to go to 100 times earnings like big tech. It's only trading 10 times, Stuart, and it's up, I mean, triple since the, the COVID moment while yielding uh, about 4% and growing the dividend every year for 70 years. All right. You made a good case. Yes, sir. Just maybe That's what I'm here to that, do is a good case. <laughs> good case. It beats the alternative. <laughs> it does indeed. Yeah. Thank you, David. Any last thoughts on Israel? Well, I th- I, my prayers are intense right now. The whole thing is heartbreaking. But I will say, for those that are watching it as a market story, understand that markets don't have all the information either. There's a lot still that's going to go on here. And so market response can change quickly, too. Uh, fundamentally, it's a human story of atrocity of what Hamas is doing to our friends and allies, Israel. I think that is the correct word to use. David, thank you very much for being here.